Hello. Uh, today we're going to talk about the formation of Yosemite National Park and just generally how the Sierras came um, into creation. So this involves some plate tectonics. We're going to go through it kind of quickly. But what we have is one plate subducting under another plate. So we have the Farallon plate and the North American plate. When this plate subducts under, when it goes underneath, some of that rock will start to melt and it's less dense and it will rise up through the crust, through this North American plate as magma. And that magma can start building up the Sierra Nevada mountain range. So magma from subducting plate. Um, the reason this magma starts to rise up is it's actually fluids within the subducting plate that changes the chemistry of some of that melted rock, some of that magma, which allows it to then rise up. And it's gonna rise up, like I said, through this, in this case, continental plate. This is the plate that uh, makes up the land that we think of as North America. Now, before this happened, the, what we think of the, as the Sierra Nevada mountain range, that was just kind of rolling hills. Um, they weren't very high. Uh, there weren't these big peaks. Uh, and the Merced River or the ancestral Merced River would flow through these hills uh, fairly gently because the, um, the hills aren't very steep. So the gravity isn't as intense. It's not pulling the water down as intensely if um, if these hills are just kind of um, mildly sloped. So the Merced River quietly throws uh, flowed through these foothills. But when this magma started to accumulate under the plate, under this North American plate, and then started to get to the surface, all these foothills got thrust up into the um, uh, into the uh, air. They, so they got taller and taller and taller. And that changes some things. And what's going to happen is now the uh, mountains are much more steep. And because of that, the Merced River has a lot more energy to it. Um, steeper slope, the water's moving faster. And with that increased speed, we have increased energy. And our valleys are going to look a lot different. You could see the water here was kind of gently flowing. You don't see a lot of white water. It's not carving out really deep valleys. But now that we have higher mountains and more energy, we start to carve out these valleys much quicker and we get what's called a V-shaped valley literally because they take on a V shape. They tend to straighten out. Um, they dig into these valleys uh, very rapidly and cause this V formation. Well, after this happens and we have these mountains, the Sierra Nevada form, then we get ice ages. And the ice ages would cover Uh, the Sierra Nevadas in glaciers. Much more snow than we have up there now. And these glaciers filled up all these valleys, pretty much covering all of the mountains except for the highest peaks. It was only the highest peaks that would stick out. And there would be these vast sheets of ice um, covering the rest of the mountains. And then these flowing glaciers, which kind of flow slowly like a river, would accumulate in the valleys.
So, like I said, before the Ice Age, we had the V-shaped valley. Uh, the Ice Age comes along, and the glaciers are slowly moving down the valley, and they carve out these big chunks of rock. They carve out these really smooth sides, because as they move, they're picking up rock along the, the valley floor all the time. And it goes from being a V-shaped valley to being what we call a U-shaped valley. And it takes on the shape of a capital letter U. And you can see the difference here in these images. Well, this is what happened to Yosemite. Yosemite Valley started as a very narrow valley, a V-shaped valley after the ice ages um, and after the glaciers melted you were left with these big, broad, U-shaped valleys. You see these all over the Sierras. Another interesting feature, though, is that once the glaciers retreat, once they start melting and moving back up these valleys, they actually leave some interesting, um, some interesting features behind. And in this case, what we're looking at is they create um, what are called hanging valleys. These hanging valleys, uh, what you get is these little, these little valleys that are coming off the side. Uh, they were flowing directly into what was once the glacier, right? All the way up to the top. Well, once that glacier is gone, now, they're just, this, you have this wall of rock and these waterfalls, they flow down these little hanging valleys and then out into nothing, like out into space basically, where they can drop hundreds or, or, or a thousand feet. And you see this in Yosemite. So you see the U-shaped valley that we talked about. You see several hanging valleys where they have these dramatic waterfalls that are coming pouring into the large U-shaped valley. And even Half Dome, you see Half Dome, it looks like a, uh, just like its name, it looks like a full dome that's been cut in half. And that's because the glaciers came through and eroded away the bottom part of the dome, causing it to, half of it to fall in and eventually being uh, uh, completely eroded away by that glacier. Okay, so just a little uh, information about the formation of Yosemite. Hope that helps.